Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at mixing. In today's lesson, we're going to learn all about panorama and phasing. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Before we move on to mixing down our shit song, it's important to make one thing very clear. Your whole life has been a lie. Okay, somebody had to say it. Your whole life, you thought this was a pan knob. Well, it's actually a balance knob, you dingus. Let me show you. Here we have a sweet little drummer boy. Oh, he's so nice. Oh. Okay, so very innocent, but let's put a utility on there and start uncovering his lies, okay? Uh, you'll notice that on the utility, there's a drop-down menu that allows me to select just the left or just the right channel and copy it over to both sides. So if I select the left channel, now the left channel is now present on both the left and right channels of this track. So it sounds like this. Okay, looks like the left channel is purely composed of the reverb from the drums. Sounds like Uncle Joe's wet farts. Um, and let's go ahead and compare that to the right channel. And that's where our little drummer boy is. Okay, so let's take the utility off. Let's say I wanted to take that little drummer boy who's primarily on the right channel as we saw and shift him over to the left. So let's go ahead and try doing that with this pan knob here. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So you're saying that no matter how far I twist that pan knob, our little drummer boy is just never making it over to the left side here. What does that tell you? It tells you that this is just a balance knob. All it does is it turns up or down the volumes of the left and right channels. It can never actually take information from the right side and shift it over to the left. So what do we have to do? Well, one option is to download this nifty Max for Live plugin that actually converts this fake pan knob into a real one. Observe. With the plugin on, I'm now able to pan the meat of the drummer boy over onto the left side here. And there he is. Okay, just bursting with energy there. Now, if you're scared of Max, uh, which is understandable, uh, you can actually right-click on this pan knob and select Split Stereo Pan Mode. What that allows you to do is actually pan the left and right channels of these tracks separately, as if they were two different people. Uh, so this, now I'm just going to pan the right channel over to the middle here, maybe over to the left slightly, and then take the reverb channel, push them over to the right. And wowzers, so much more control than we had over this fake balance knob, okay? Wowzers. So now that we've uncovered the panning conspiracy, let's move on to phase. Now we've all had phases that we're not proud of. For example, Derek had a phase where he couldn't stop bringing tech decks to school. That was squashed. Um, but here's the thing. We generally want our phases to be aligned with one another. Let me show you what I mean. Take the sound here. It's perfectly mono. It sounds exactly the same on the left and the right channels. Uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to use an auto pan here, and I'm actually not going to use it for the effect. I'm just going to use it for the visual. So this is what the waveform of the sine wave looks like on the left and right channels. It's identical. Now watch what happens if I click one of these buttons. Okay, wowzers. Now the sound is super duper wide as if it's coming from behind us. Uh, what I did here is I took the left channel here and I actually inverted the phase so that it actually looks like this. You'll notice that the left and right channels here are now equally opposed to one another. They're equal and opposites, which makes the sound sound very, very wide. Um, now here's the thing. Uh, most club systems are in mono. Uh, most venues, most bars, most funeral homes, most bathrooms. So if we take this song here, which sounds amazing in my headphones, and make it mono, oh, wowzers! Okay, so our super wide, beautiful synth was canceled out, okay? Because the left and right channels are equal and opposites of one another, when we sum to mono, they actually cancel each other out and are completely removed from the mix. So you're probably not going to invert the phase of your tracks in such an extreme way as I have here. What you're probably going to end up doing is having, I don't know, like a chorus effect like this. 
which is actually a combination of frequencies that are both in phase and out of phase. To kind of visualize what's going on here, let's actually use this free plugin called the Ozone Imager. And wowzers, you can see here that this is the uh, stereo field of the sound here, and I actually make it wider or narrower which we can see reflected in this visual here until it's perfectly mono, this tiny little line here. Now, you see these 45 degree angles going to the left and right of this pizza. Um, whenever a sound passes those 45 degree angles, it's automatically out of phase. Okay, so this is, these are the out of phase areas here. So generally we want to keep most of our sounds within uh, these 45 degree angles here. Now, I'm not saying that you necessarily have to have every sound be perfectly mono or in phase, but it's important to make sure your mix sounds go both good in the headphones and also in the funeral home. So let's actually compare that real quick. Let's hear what it sounds like in a funeral home or bar. And wowzers, our sound is preserved. Okay, wowzers. Now, give yourself a tap on the wrist. It sounds amazing. Okay, so check it. In today's lesson, we uncovered the panning conspiracy and also found any phasing issues that might arise when converting our mix to mono. In next week's lesson, we're going to learn how to apply these concepts to our mix down. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, you dingus. I'm Underbelly. See you soon.